Hey everyone, Nick Dearbird is here teaching you financial modeling. Today we're going to be doing an introduction to scenario analysis. This is part of our lecture segment on probabilistic modeling. So uh, last time we finished up the math review, which is allowing us to work with probability in our models. And now we're going to look at the first application of probability modeling, which is scenario modeling or scenario analysis. So the whole idea behind scenario modeling is you want to come up with different situations or scenarios which are relevant to your model. And kind of the classic example for scenario analysis is to think about the state of the economy. Are we in a recession? Are we in a normal period? Are, are we in an expansion period? And that's the classic example because the state of the economy will affect nearly every financial model. And so it's a natural choice, a natural thing to look at in scenario analysis. Now you can also pick other scenarios which are relevant to whatever you're analyzing. Maybe it's some project, some capital budgeting uh, model, you're evaluating some project and there's different things that could occur once you are working on the project. Um, you know, maybe you're uh, a firm that's that's mining uh, a mine and there are different scenarios for uh, how much gold you find in the mine uh, or you know whatever is appropriate for the problem that you're working on whatever is relevant to think about as far as different situations um, but here looking at the state of the economy is going to apply to most models and so the idea behind scenario analysis is that we're going to think about each one of these different situations here, recession, normal expansion economy. And we're going to say, let's look at all the different inputs of the model and what values of the inputs make sense in that situation. So in a recession, you're going to be earning a um, lower interest rate. Um, and then here, um, it really depends on the individual, whether they would be saving more or saving less in a recession. If you're very financially constrained, you would probably be saving less because you're probably earning less and you need to pay your expenses. Um, but if you're more financially well off, you might save more in a recession just because uh, you're kind of worried about the state of things. So you're going to save in response to that. So let's go with that case and say that um, that this, for this person that we're modeling, uh, the savings rate is also going to be higher during a recession. And you would want to do that for all the other inputs in the model as well. What makes sense in a recession and line all those up. And then go to thinking about the normal economy. Interest rate's going to go up. Savings rate's going to go down. And think about all the other inputs as well. Same thing for the expansion economy. Whatever situations that you have, think about them separately and all the inputs that make sense for that particular situation. Um, and then the idea is then to run the model with each of these different sets of the inputs and look at the outcomes. And you can stop there um, and not uh, work the probability modeling side of it. You can just say, this is my number for a recession. This is my normal number for a normal economy. This is it for the expansion economy. Uh, but where we can work probability in here is then we can also assign a probability to each one of these cases. So then the um, different scenarios are a discrete variable here. And we now have a probability distribution for those scenarios uh, by just assigning a probability to each case. So here we're saying 30% recession, 50% normal economy, 20% expansion economy. And what that allows you to do is then take an expected value across the different cases to get an expected outcome from your model that's uh, separate from the baseline result, but maybe more realistic because you've thought about scenarios rather than just the most likely value of each input. Um, so um, then as far as implementing scenario modeling, so there's two main approaches here to go about it, whether you implement it internally or externally 
to your model. And the distinction here is just about We've already been talking about this concept of the base model, which gives you the basic result and then extensions to the model where you can explore the parameter space and do other things um, to get a better understanding of the results from your model. So uh, internal means put it in the base model itself. External means do it as part of those extensions to the existing model. Um, so if it's internal, then you have these uh, different situations, cases of the inputs within the model itself. And then within the model, it's going to take an expected value across those. And now, um, depends on where you're using it, it could be that um, it's doing that for the inputs, and now you get an expected value of each input. Or it could be at the end of the model, and you're getting an expected value across the different cases as your output from the model. Um, there's a number of different ways to apply it, but the, the key distinction is that it's within your basic model. Any other extensions to your model are now going to be uh, outside of that scenario analysis, as in there's going to be scenario analysis included within any other extensions to the model as well. Whereas with the external implementation, you take that base model and you don't change anything about it. Um, you then extend it with scenario analysis separately. So there, your basic model just takes the inputs and returns the outputs corresponding to those inputs. But now you look at the different cases, the different situations, scenarios, um, and run the model with each of those different scenarios and get the results from that. And then here's... Um, sort of the pros and cons of internal versus external scenario analysis. Um, and this is talking about taking an existing model and then adding scenario analysis to it. Um, so for internal, um, an advantage to the external approach is that the original model is still as it was. You can still use it as you were before doing the scenario analysis. You can do other extensions, which are not having to also run the scenario analysis. Um, so it's more kind of flexible and, and extensible that way. Whereas you go with the internal, then what you have before is now an old version of the model. Now you have this new version, which has the scenario analysis baked in. And now those two things are inherently entwined. And anything else you do with the model is going to be running that scenario analysis as well. Um, then next is an advantage to internal scenario analysis where uh, you don't have to do anything different about running the model. Uh, you just pass in the inputs as you were before, you get the output as you were before, and now it has sensitivity analysis running within it. Uh, whereas with the external, now you're talking about running the model multiple times with each of these different sets of inputs and collecting the output and associating that together. Uh, so it becomes a little more complicated to run the model with external scenario analysis. Um, and then the next one is an advantage to external where the base model is completely unchanged it's exactly as complex as it was before. Whereas adding sensitivity analysis into the base model is making it more complex. There's just more things going on within the model and that can make it more difficult to work on the base model going forward. Um, and then the last is an advantage to um, internal um, where this you know, pretty much is um, very similar to this point. It's more complex to run the model uh, with external and exactly the same to run it as before with internal. And so kind of my main recommendations here, you're gonna go and build scenario analysis in your model. Should it be internal? Should it be external? The main considerations to me are if you've already built out the full model, that's already like a big push towards doing external because your original model works. You don't want to go and have to rework the whole thing. 
it's much easier to add external on top of your existing model. Um, and then where I would say you should use internal is, um, well, you should go more in that direction if you're starting the model from scratch and you know you want to have scenario analysis. It could make sense to put it into the base model. Um, but I would also only do that if you think that scenario analysis is very core to the problem that you're trying to solve. You know, if uh, thinking about states of the economy is very important for the outcomes of your model, maybe it makes sense to build that in from the get-go. Whereas for a standard model, it's probably fine to just have that externally as kind of um, a check on things and looking at it in different situations. So that um, gives an overview of scenario analysis and we'll come back next time to look at implementing scenario analysis in Excel. So thanks for listening and see you next time.